An AI surgeon just pulled off flawless gallbladder removals. Humanoid bots in Beijing faced off in the world's first all-robot football match. Amazon's million-strong fleet got a new deep fleet brain. Intel spun RealSense into a fresh $50 million robotics powerhouse. The eerily lifelike AI da painted King Charles, hugging face unleashed a hackable desktop droid for 300 bucks. Researchers turbocharge safe robot training with QStack, and figure AI insists your home will soon be crawling with humanoids. All of it just happened, so let's talk about it. First up, researchers at Johns Hopkins just pulled off something that a few years ago would have sounded completely insane. An AI-powered surgical robot removed gallbladders on its own with zero physical assistance and nailed it every single time. They started with the, the Da Vinci Research Kit, a widely used robotic surgery system, but upgraded it with a powerful machine learning model. The result? a new platform they called the Surgical Robot Transformer Hierarchy, or SRTH for short. Unlike earlier systems that relied on strict instructions or had human operators guiding the arms, this one was trained almost like a medical student. It watched hours of real gallbladder surgeries, just video, no step-by-step -step breakdowns, and learned what to do by observing how experienced surgeons move, react, and adapt mid-operation. Then they tested it not on simple tissue or pig parts, but on advanced human-like models with synthetic organs that mimic the look, feel, and structure of real human anatomy. And this robot wasn't just mimicking motions, it was fully executing the procedure, start to finish, across eight separate surgeries. 17 individual tasks, including identifying and isolating tiny ducts and arteries, placing microscopic surgical clips, and cleanly cutting tissue with surgical scissors. What's wild is how it handled the unpredictability. If the synthetic tissue looked slightly different from what it saw during training, it adjusted on the fly. And it could actually understand verbal cues from the surgical team, thanks to the same type of transformer-based AI that powers models like ChatGPT. So if a nurse said something like, check the left clip, it could interpret that and react accordingly. Every single surgery was a success, a full 100% completion rate with no errors. Sure, it took a bit longer than a human surgeon, but the precision matched what you'd expect from someone with years of experience. That alone makes this a massive leap from the old star system, which back in the year 2022 could only operate on a pig with heavy human guidance, and only after staff had marked the tissue with colored lines and the robot followed a predefined blueprint. SRTH, on the other hand, operated freely, adjusted in real time, and completed all procedures without relying on scripted actions. The lead researchers say, this isn't just about technical performance, it's about trust. For the first time, we're looking at a surgical robot that's not just good at repeating tasks, but actually understands the procedure well enough to make judgment calls. They believe that with more training, it could handle a range of surgeries and eventually operate on real patients with little or no supervision. And honestly, after this, that doesn't feel like a stretch anymore. Now, leave the operating theater and sprint over to a football pitch in Beijing's Yizhuang Zone, where four squads of booster robotics humanoids just played China's first tournament without any joystick jockeys in the back room. Each side fielded three active bots and a substitute, running two 10-minute halves with a quick breather. These machines spotted a ball from 20 meters out with better than 90% accuracy, tracked teammates, read the field lines, and decided when to pass or blast a shot. Tsinghua University's lineup edged out China Agricultural University's Mountain Sea Group 5-3 in the final collisions allowed, so long as nobody programmed dirty tackles. Organizers likened the skill level to kindergartners, awkward gait and all, yet the point isn't finesse, it's pure autonomy. Founder Cheng Hao already talks about mixed human-robot matches but stresses total safety first. Given the speed at which the underlying vision and control algorithms are evolving, that crossover game suddenly sounds less like science fiction and more like an entry on next year's calendar. While we're on big milestones, Amazon just rolled its one millionth production robot onto the floor of a fulfillment center in Japan. Robots now sit nearly one-to-one -one with human employees across more than 300 global facilities, and the entire fleet has a new conductor, Deep Fleet. 
a generative AI foundation model that coordinates every little shuttle's path. By anticipating traffic and reshuffling tasks on the fly, Deep Fleet cuts travel time a solid 10%, meaning packages should reach the conveyor belt and your doorstep faster and with lower cost per trip. Vice President Scott Dresser points out that these machines aren't displacing frontline staff. They're taking the unforgiving heavy lifting jobs while Amazon upskills workers into technical roles. Since the year 2019, 700,000 people have moved through those training tracks, learning to maintain or program the very bots whirring past them. Speaking of companies betting hard on physical AI, Intel just spun out its RealSense division into a standalone firm and announced a $50 million Series A backed by MediaTek Innovation Fund and Intel Capital. Nadav Orbach, who ran Intel's Incubation and Disruptive Innovation Unit, now wears the Chief Executive Officer badge. RealSense keeps roughly 130 engineers, and its depth-sensing cameras already live inside drones, factory pickers, and autonomous lawnmowers. Orbach says the fresh cash will unlock new product lines aimed squarely at safety and plug-and-play ease. Intel hangs on to a minority stake, but the message is clear. The timing is now for physical AI, and they want external capital to chase the demand curve before someone else does. Art lovers aren't left out of the disruption either. AI Da, the ultra-realistic humanoid with hazel eyes and a straight-cut bob, just unveiled an oil portrait of King Charles called Algorithm King. The robot's arms swap tools depending on the medium. Last year, it painted Alan Turing and fetched more than $1 million at auction. AI Dai explains every brushstroke in slow, deliberate cadence, claiming the goal isn't to boost the bank account, but to spark debate around responsible innovation. The new piece nods to the monarch's work on environmental conservation and interfaith dialogue. Creator Aidan Meller built AI Da in the year 2019 with Oxford and Birmingham AI researchers framing the whole project as an ethical arts experiment. The robot doubles down. It's here to widen conversation, not to push human painters off the canvas. Whether collectors accept code-generated artwork as true creative output is, in AI Daw's own words, an important and interesting point of conversation. Back on the desktop, Hugging Face wants a tiny robot sitting next to your keyboard. Reachy Mini stands 11 inches tall, wiggles antennas, tracks your face, and dances out of the box with 15 behaviors, yet its real draw is openness. For $299, you get a kit that tethers to your computer, throw in another 150, and the company bundles a Raspberry Pi 5, a battery, Wi-Fi, four microphones, and an accelerometer, letting the bot roam untethered when shipments start late this summer. Every hardware file and software routine goes straight to GitHub, so kids, hobbyists, or anyone who can string together Python can teach Ricci new tricks or download someone else's. Hugging Face even plans JavaScript and Scratch support, hoping to seed a community that shares motion packs the way modders trade game skins. Training robots safely and quickly is still a bottleneck, though, and researchers from the University of Sydney and NVIDIA just proposed a clever workaround called QStack. Traditional reinforcement learning either learns fast and crashes often or stays safe at turtle speed because it depends on hand-tuned cost maps. QStack fuses model predictive control, the disciplined planner that checks constraints every millisecond. With deep reinforcement learning but swaps out the usual gradient step for Stein variational gradient descent. Think of model predictive control as a GPS route and Stein variational gradient descent as a swarm of particles being nudged toward higher reward paths. The beauty here is that Q values themselves generate the safety aware cost map on the fly, so no one has to write custom penalties for every nut and bolt. In simulation, QStack hit 80% task performance with just 68.8% .8 of the samples needed by the next best competitor, and it nailed fruit picking in the real world at 93.3% success. That kind of efficiency and built-in safety could spill into warehouse pick and place, autonomous vans weaving through traffic, or any scenario where trial and error is pricey. Of course, none of this matters if general purpose humanoids fail to step out of the lab. Brett Adcock, founder of Figure AI, just told the Around the Prompt podcast 
that homes will see useful bipedal helpers within single-digit years. Figure's latest update let its Helix robot perform an hour of non-stop logistics work on a conveyor belt, approaching human pace. Adcock credits sturdier actuators and neural networks flexible enough to handle messy environments, venture capital agrees. Figure has banked $2.34 billion so far, with $1.5 billion landing in February's Series C that valued the company at $2.6 billion. Robotics funding overall hit $6.1 billion in the year 2024, up 19% year-on-year. With Tesla's Optimus breakdancing on factory floors, Boston Dynamics Atlas cartwheeling, and Agility Robotics Digit marching through Amazon pilots. Adcock's bold claim is that eventually a sidewalk or an office will host as many humanoid robots as humans, and he sees the form factor as the ultimate deployment vector for artificial general intelligence. Critics like Fei Fei Li wonder if a single silhouette is truly energy efficient across every job, yet Adcock counters that hardware reliability has turned the corner, and the real question now is scale, not feasibility. Let me know which part shocked you the most. Was it the surgical robot, the football bots, or something else entirely? Drop your thoughts in the comments, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and like the video to support the channel. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.